Hello everybody, Jose Rodriguez here again. This is the first week of January. And just the other day, a question came up in my Facebook group. If you're not a member yet, you're missing out on the share knowledge of almost, are we past 2000 people? So please consider joining. This is a one of a kind group on Facebook dedicated to photo printing and printing technology. So join us. Anyway, the question was this. How long does it take to fill the waste ink pads in a Canon printer? Well, that could be applied also to Epson printers. The only advantage that Epson printers have over Canon printers, especially the type of printers that have internal waste ink pads, you cannot change those yourself, actually. Neither one of them is easy for anybody, any, even me. I cannot even begin to tackle that. It requires basically a complete disassembly of the printer to get at the very bottom of the chassis body to remove those soil pads, replace them, and then reset everything back to zero or empty, the two counters that keep counting as you generate waste ink. But on a Canon printer, again, the same thing happens, but probably a little bit more often due to those scheduled cleaning cycles that take place. Epsons are more forgiving. They allow you to let your printer clog. You know, Canon doesn't. There are reasons behind that. And I've discussed those in my live streams. I've given a few theories as to why that takes place. I may be right. I may be wrong. But I think what I am thinking is the reason makes a lot of sense. Anyway, I'm going to do a video covering that very subject. But anyway, let's go back. So you start brand spanking new. Your pads are pristine white. And your counter is down to zero and you insert those cartridges as you do when you initialize a printer. It does the uh, printhead priming. On a printer such as this, a lot of ink goes through there. On a printer such as a uh, Epson, uh, maybe a P400, not so much because those cartridges right on top of the printhead. The same thing with a Pro 100, those cartridges right on top of the printhead. The Pro 10, the same thing. But stationary card printers, Pro 1, Pro 1000, P800, uh, P600, and so forth, they will have to load a lot more ink to flush out air and any possible packing fluid that lives inside those ink lines. And these printheads have little built-in printhead dampers that contain a small volume of ink. All of that has to be flushed out. So whether it is packing fluid or whether it is air, or whatever, ink will have to be flushed through the complete system, out the printhead, into the perch pad, and sucked down by that little vacuum pump into your internal ink pads. This one and the P800 have internal replaceable waste ink cartridges, so that's not a big problem. But the ones that do not, but those that do not have user replaceable waste ink cartridges have to rely on their internal diapers, if you will, to catch and collect that ink. As ink is being generated, waste ink that is, through cleaning cycles, perch cycles, whatever, that ink is being sucked by the pump as the printhead parks itself over the perch pad. A little bit of ink is drawn out, it detaches, that ink is drained. Again, attach, suck, detach, drain. And so that's what a cleaning cycle is like. So that has to go somewhere and it goes into the waste ink pads. Every time you do that, the counter keeps counting up and up and up. And finally, it reaches 100%. And whether it is a Canon printer or an Epson printer, it will give you a message saying that certain parts have reached the end of their life. That is it. Your printer is done. It's basically done. You have two choices. Well, three if you're really brave. The first easiest choice is, of course, to junk the printer and buy a new one. Well, I don't really want to do that. My printer's still good, you know. So the second choice, of course, is to drive wherever you have to go or mail your printer to a service center, have them remove the pads after they have to literally disassemble the whole printer, clean it, reinstall new pads, and reset the counters down to zero using what? An adjustment program. We'll talk a little bit about that in another video because this is a really interesting subject. Anyway, so you get your printer back, it is like new again. 
of course, barring any other mechanical problems the printer may have developed during this time. Now, Epson printers, 13-inch variety, tabletop type printers, there are ways to divert that ink to an external bottle. And so if you have that adjustment program that I just stated, or use the WIC, the WIC Reset Tool, which is a free utility you can get online, and then you buy serial numbers for $10 each that will allow you to reset those counters back to zero. Now, I implore you to not reset the counters before you perform that modification where you are now going to divert ink to an outside bottle or container because you're not stopping waste ink production. It will continue to be produced and it will continue to be dumped. I don't want it dumped into my waste ink pads any longer. I want it to be dumped into an external bottle that I can empty whenever it reaches a certain level. And all my Epson printers are set up for that very same process. So Canon printers, sorry, you cannot do that with a Canon printer. At least I haven't figured out a way of doing it. And besides that, there's no way I can reset my Canon printers to zero as far as waste ink counters. Only they can do that because they need to log on to a special server and use a special tool that, you know, we just can't get a hold of. So that is it. How long does it take? After all of that blabbering, I have no idea. So don't ask that anymore. Yeah. Rough answer for a good question. It's really, there, there's, there's simply no idea. It might take someone just a year and a half to reach that point, or it might take five to six years to reach that point. It just depends on your generation of waste ink. My Pro 100, which is sitting on the lower shelf of four printers, I have four printers on top of each other on a rack. That was installed um, 2013, August. I did the setup video, which I have to thank all of you guys who have viewed that video. It's one of my highest view count videos that I have ever made. Very popular. I think it's the only one out there. It's over an hour long and takes you through every step you need to go to, including setup, how to print, all of that stuff. Anyway, that printer is five and a half years old already and still going strong. So I'm happy with the results of that printer. So then I can say, all right, well, it, it's going to take you five years. Well, maybe yes, maybe no. If you're that guy in Amazon, I have no clue what his name is. They have a hundred Pro 100s at least, and they run them day and night. They produce prints that they sell on Amazon. Prints of old patents, historical patents and things like that. People like to buy those and frame them. And they're sort of like a decorative type print. Anyway, they are printing so much with those printers. I wish I could contact them and just ask them, hey, how long does it take for one of your printers wasting pads to reach max? You know what they do? They throw them out and they buy a new one. So it could take about a year and a half if you're really producing a lot of waste ink, or it could take at least like me, more than five and a half years and still knock on wood, still going strong. So that is it, there's really no answer to that. Now with an Epson printer, you can use the WIC tool to actually read the waste ink counters and see where you are at, at that point. That's really nice, isn't it? That way you know that maybe if you are at 80%, you might reconsider doing that modification, <clears throat> buying your $10 reset serial number, and then proceed with the resetting of those counters. And again, if you then, from that point on, dump your ink outside of the printer into a bottle, then you will not continue to soil those internal ink pads. Now, most people will think that, oh, you know what? I can't do that because I'll lose my warranty. Well, you know what? If you go to www.octoinkjet.co.uk, that's Martin, great guy. He has methods for practically all of these printers, how to perform that modification and not have to worry about warranty problems because no one will know. You can actually revert that printer back to the original condition. No one will know. And so in my case, you know what I would probably do? As soon as I you know, initiate my printer, I would perform that modification and start collecting ink outside. You will be shocked. You will be shocked how much ink you actually generate. And imagine that volume of ink being dumped on those absorbent pads. And they're only about that thick. 
okay? Some of them are bigger than, than other. Uh, Pro 100 supposedly has huge pads, Pro 1 as well. So we'll see. I will let you guys know when mine is full. Of course, I have two printers waiting inside boxes, brand new, in the aisles. So I don't have anything to worry about when it comes to that point. But anyway, that should answer your question. The answer is no one knows, okay? It could be very quickly and it could be, you know, years down the road. So that is it. Often there is no answer to questions. So anyway, thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and like, as always, join the Facebook group. Look at my affiliate links on the main channel. And happy printing, everybody, and bye-bye.